Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Podcast. Today with us, we have Jonathan Enudeme. This is an AI edition. We're going to talk about his startup, Zamit Africa. John's a young guy with huge ambitions. And yeah, he's he's quite uncommon amongst commons uh, in Africa. So we're going to talk about AI, AI in Africa events and how John is raising the ecosystem up. So John, uh, welcome to the pod. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and Zamit Africa? Yeah, definitely. Good afternoon. It's evening here in Nigeria, Lagos. Yeah. And so, of course, uh, I'm the CEO of Zoom in Africa, and we are trying mm -hmm. to democratize AI in Africa. You know, AI is something like uh, a a wish, a wishful thing kind of in Africa, but the world is blooming with AI. We just had a recent um, release of GPT-4, and people are already doing great stuff with it, but it is only a dream we can dream of building something like that in Africa. Hmm. But Love we it. want to help change that. We um, want to change that narrative, and we're already putting things in place. So about Zoom in Africa, we started off helping people, young ones, to get into the AI space. We taught people um, AI through internship and through courses, and a couple of them are doing great already in this space, selling jobs and getting good understanding on the space. Then we are also building a solution to help businesses all around Africa and in fact in the globe to use AI models in forms of APIs. So um, it's even great that ChatGPT is just an example of what these APIs mean. So everyone is using ChatGPT to you know ask, ask questions and get answers and they don't have to know how to use AI. So we're trying to build something similar, just that it's gonna be more than just text, it's gonna be visual, it's gonna be financial data, it's gonna be all forms of um, data that AI can work on to provide solutions to business problems. So if you are in the manufacturing industry and you want um, a computer vision model in your assembly line, but you don't have a machine learning engineer, you can use the AI APIs to, you know, AI APIs on our platform to build that solution. So we are going across different verticals in the industry and we're trying to provide solutions to each verticals. Love it. Is there a vertical in particular that you think you can monetize quicker than the others? Because typically, if you focus in many directions, you'll get like very few results, kind of jack of all trades. So is there like a vertical uh, in which you think you can get a, a better and more earlier product market fit? Yes, yes, definitely. So there, there, is, there are different stages to artificial intelligence. And the stage we are at, right now in Africa is, I think, is more of the financial place where you can use um, predictive AI, can use AI to predict future outcomes. We can also use, so you can basically focus on the financial space, like fintechs, KYCs, and likes. Those are areas we can easily cash and um, get good results in the space. What's the state of AI in Africa and precisely in, in Nigeria or Lagos? Do you see other AI startups? How's the ecosystem there? And how are you going to contribute to it? Yeah, um, the space is, you know, it's it's quite young. We have more people looking into this space as well, but we don't have many organizations. You know, we have a lot of developers trying to hone the skill in AI, but a few of startups focused mainly on AI. We have a couple who are, build, who are building KYC models. It's basically AI. Fraud detection models is basically AI. But there are only a few of them. And uh, so what we are doing, our marketplace is basically going to help to, you know, fast track that, pro that, that, that problem where different AI engineers from all over the world can contribute their AI models into the marketplace. And different businesses and developers here in Nigeria, here in Africa, can use those models. You know, you don't have to basically build all AI models you use. You know, you can build on the blocks, on the building blocks that big organizations like the open AIs, like uh, Google already built. So that is a good way for us to, you know, enter into the African market in AI. We're seeing some place some hubs of AI in Silicon Valley's, these hacker houses um, and the ecosystem thriving there. How can a country with almost no track record of AI innovation can create something similar? How, how do you 
generate these ecosystem is is my first question. Then the second question is, is there still such a thing as a, a physical community? Aren't like the best AI community is going to be built online where and will be location independent? Okay, uh, I think I get your first question. So, some countries in Africa are actually paying attention to AI. Like, um, I think Rwanda, they invested, they're investing heavily in AI. Mauritius, I think, is also investing heavily in AI. They actually calls on, hold on um, research, research scientists and AI, senior AI engineers, professors to, you know, to look into the space and see how they can bring solutions. And we we are following after the um the footprints of the likes of China and US in that regards. I, I know US, the government of US actually invested in artificial intelligence with huge sum of money. Similarly, China invested in artificial intelligence with huge sum of money and a lot of other countries. So well, Nigeria is trying to do something similar. They have um, a body, they have a body actually I don't know how functional it is because the government agency that is focused on AI research and robotics in Nigeria. So, and they also try to, in their little way, build capacity. So we just need more government involvement in the whole scene and um, the development with skyrockets. And once the government brings policies that support the use of AI, different investors from all over are now interested and they know that their investments will not be turned you know, into ashes. Then as for communities, yeah, we have a lot of online communities. We have a lot of online communities. As for physical communities, you know, more of hubs. If you are if you are starting up, a few hubs, but you know, I don't know any physically personally. I don't know any physically as I as I stand here. I don't know any major major hub where you know AI engineers and researchers go and you know they brainstorm and cook solutions. I don't know any at the moment. But it's something that is worth looking into, yeah, because you know, development stems out of those kind of hubs. There's this um Hayes Valley in uh in San Francisco that is quite the, the hub right now um of AI. Uh I will send you an article uh written by Washington Post for that they describe it as the cerebral valley. Uh, and that's where, you know, all these hacker houses, houses are for AI. Uh, the article is quite good. I read it yesterday. I think uh, I think San Francisco, there was an exodus from there. Uh, most people went to Austin, Texas to develop technology there. Uh, but yeah, there was obviously a whole bunch of folks remaining vouching for Silicon Valley success and San Francisco. And they all came back to, to that one. And now th this one is the trend. Um, coming back to to Africa and what you're you're developing is quite special because you develop that like almost straight out of school, um, and you have various products that are quite interesting. Sure, you want uh, the API marketplace to live, then you have the academy. What's your plan with the marketplace? Um, how much customer do you want to to generate from that in uh, 2023, and how much uh, can that monetize in, in dollars and i see that you 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 sell um in uh I, nairo is it the nira the kenyan yeah, nira? Nira, nira. <laughs> nira. Uh, so do you do you plan on selling internationally or only in africa yeah so we actually plan on selling internationally so the focus is to bring models from across the globe that are solving problems, real-time solving real problems. We're actually in talks with a company at the moment, and um, they're in Europe, and they sell in pounds. But we are trying to make it easy for developers here in Africa and Nigeria to assess those kind of models. So we're providing both a dollar solution and a Naira solution. And of course, the um, value of Naira is really, really low. So if um, companies we're talking to are charging their models per call, at zero point zero three dollars, and that, that's a huge sum of money in Africa. When you're talking about per calls, and some companies have as much as ten thousand calls per day, so you can equate that and see how much they be using for charges on a daily basis. So I think one thing we're focusing on now, not not thinking. One thing we're trying to focus on is we meet with cost uh, with 
AI startups that have these solutions across the globe, we one thing we do is we negotiate the pricing that would fit the African market, the Nigerian market, that makes it easy for you know these businesses to adopt AI to use their APIs. So one thing we focus on is the pricing, help it to you know bring the pricing down to kind of accommodate businesses here. And the vision, the vision is we basically want it to compete with the major big guys. Um, and some of the big guys, in fact, one of the biggest guys is Rapid API, where they have millions of developers. We want that to, we want a niche of AI engineers from all over the world. And this field is really growing, field is really growing. So it's not a place to say 100,000 developers, AI engineers in the year. But of course, that's so much. But, you know, a little drop, little drops make the ocean right so mm -hmm. we start small and uh, we get more and more the more the more we get people on board the more referrals we get the more solutions that we're able to solve the more problems we're able to solve you know the more people come and use our products how can ai be used to work on africa's direst problems for example i talked uh, this morning to a nagtech ai founder uh using ai to water plants um the right way so that the crops can can grow better. I also talked with a guy with a background in microfinancing in in Africa. How can AI technology be used to to solve Africa's top problems? Oh, that's interesting. So for the Arctic, I don't know. I think I mentioned to you that I studied agriculture, but I yes. <laughs> when I studied agriculture, I was venturing into artificial intelligence and um, programming. So they are, those are actually vision models. Basically, you use vision models for Arctic. So there are solutions where you you are able to monitor the the um images that you get from your farm, and used to you know to ascertain the level of water that you have there. So it's automated. Maybe you have a, a drone that goes around your farm and it sees the ground. It sees that it's not wet. It's dry, and you know. You can use that to, you know, tell you that this place needs water. This place needs water, and those kind of um, it helps you to reduce water use. Helps you to reduce the um use of water, and it's precise. So they call it precision farming, actually, where you more focused on you know each crop and what it need. It, it's 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 large. It's a large project. Want for want to invest in it. It's actually a very large project. It has a lot of moving parts. But it's totally doable. It's totally doable. So the problem, the problem with projects like this is, you know, they're big projects and they involve a lot of investment. So we don't have people who are really, really innovative who just want to invest in this solution and see what it brings. You know, they don't have that kind of money around that they can invest in something they're not sure of the full outcome. You know, they rather put place their bets where you know they can say that they will get something out of it, but. I think a lot of errors from a lot of errors you get, you know, something concrete. It's something worth looking into. And um, I think a few companies are already doing similar things to, you know, to to weed their farms, weed bots, company in the U. I think company, I don't know where the company is, but weed bots, they're building something for weeding, precision farming. And we have something for laser, uh, where they use laser to kill grasses. So the computer vision model spots the crops and um, it's able to identify the crop from the grass or the weed. And it kills the weed with lasers. So there are different solutions in that space already. Then as for um microfinances, they majorly give out loans. So it's a matter of getting this um financial record of whoever it is you're giving a loan to and see if their credit score is good enough to give them loans. So you are able to reduce the default of um, people you're giving loans to. So I think there are some solutions in that space, which even um some companies are already using in Nigeria. Uh, but we source those kind of models from big companies abroad, you know. But it's something we can develop here in Africa, here in Nigeria. Love it. You have not uh, generated revenue so far with with Zemit Africa, or, or very little, uh, until it's sustainable. What's your plan? to get to revenue ASAP um, so that you can grow quicker and accomplish your, your mission to democratize AI in Africa? Yeah, so we we are 
we don't have money in the bank. However, we are really poised at what we're doing. We're developing money is not actually fast track. It's we're looking to see, we're seeking fund money is on the fast track at development. But in the meantime, we are working you know hard, focusing on a little space. We focus on um, a niche. Maybe we we'll focus on a niche. It's easier to get results from there than you know we escalate the process. But uh, with the little revenue we're getting, we we've been able to you know to mobilize our team and a lot of promises here and there we're also using stock option pool to bring on um, a few good people on board and um, they they actually love the concept they know that it is actually a very new concept in africa they don't have a competition in africa so some people want to just get involved in something really really nice in the horizontal um, products so it's been difficult it's been really difficult actually but you know the end goal uh, at the end you know, would smile back and say, we're able to weather the storm and see we came out and, you know, that's the goal, basically. How can African founders start more business or how can Africans become successful founders in your, your opinion? What's the ignition and what would be your advice if they decide to start their own companies? I think knowledge, knowledge is very important. Knowledge is very, very important. Whatever you don't know is, is bigger than you. So some lessons are learned the hard way and you know some tips are given to you and it seems like everything is falling into place. So knowledge is really, really important. Learn from, you know, learn from people who have already done it and who are doing it well. So one, one thing I did was I read a book, the AI Superpowers uh, by Kai Fu Lee. And it was really, really, you know, mind blowing how the U.S. and Nigeria and um and China were able to, you know, to grow the AI developments. And you know, the both of them are basically at you know war. They are real competitors. So copying the likes of how they develop them their systems, I think is something that's worthy of emulation. So one thing we can actually do is learn from people who have gone through that journey, see the mistakes they made, try to avoid them and um, glean from the successes they had and try to replicate it. I think that is that is the best way. I would not say experience is the best teacher. Sometimes the experiences you don't get to live, to, you don't get to live after such experiences. So if if you get people around you who have, have gone through the journey, reach out to them, you know, talk to them, help them, let them help you to navigate the waters as it were. And I think that's a great way to start. Love it. Where can people find out more about you, John? Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Jonathan. That's my LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not so much of a Twitter user. I use LinkedIn more more often, and my mail, of course. So, my mails are always. I always check my mails, but LinkedIn majorly. I I communicate with LinkedIn. I think it's a very good tool. All right, then Zamit Africa dot com with a z 